Sana söyleye kendim Sana bana konuyor Bir daha bir nefiye Bir daha bir nefiye Gel gezme Bir smokin hadi Subscriber, thank you very much for coming and visiting me here on Renegade Crew TV. Hey, it's a girl Shensia with a message to you from myself and the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Shen Yang, everyone be wear a mask, let the numbers drop. I don't want to avoid lay your dung flat. No one's on more to pick up our up that. Oh 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 oh, sanitize our get hospitalized. Fight the virus. Fight for your life, yeah. Now, but that talk about say you're no response no more. Don't be reckless, cause your tests say you're not happy. You can still get the virus from somebody. Don't be reckless, cause your tests say you're not happy. You can still get the virus. So keep the numbers down. Protect yourself and the people you're around. Covid in town, six feet apart and six feet in a ground. Wagwan, Wagwan, what I want to all of my nice and decent people out there, to all my viewers and subscribers, thank you very much for coming and visiting me here on Renegade Crew TV. Now that was just <coughs> excuse me. Can we take a drink here? Ooh, he's got a tickle there. But anyway, that was a PSA public service announcement from Sincere talking about COVID 19. Now, you know, first of all, um, this is the thing that you know that's plaguing the world. If you don't believe in it, that's fine. But guess what? There are people dying from it, all right? So that's real. And death is always real. Whether we're talking about violence or disease or whatever the case is, keep in mind of that. And this is something that can be avoided. So the easiest thing to go ahead and try to avoid is the fact that all you have to do is wash your hands, Put on a mask, social distance, at least he's six feet from everybody, all right? All right, now, uh, next up, I want to go ahead and talk about the mural that has gone viral all over the internet. No, well, no, this is images of painting that has been circulated from this past weekend. There's an unknown um, artist, painter, who have created por portraits of, uh, you know, of course, poss possibly his, some of his favorite um, dancehall artists, you know, like Pipes Cartel, Popcorn, um, Alkali, Skinny Bang, Shenzia, Jada Kingdom, and Mufado. And don't forget, you know, Jamaica's, you know, national hero. Uh, Hussein Bolt, you know, because he has brought some some um, gold medals to the country. So, you know, of course, definitely he's a legend. But, you know, um, the, the drawings has brought in some laughter, and not only from some fans, but from a dancer artist themselves, you know. There's somebody a ugly old fuck a hoe. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> I'm a blood clot. We can't believe this. No, that was popcorn and popcorn. He is, you know, um, poking fun at himself, you know, and some individual critiquing and and, and criticizing this uh, artist, 
you know, I don't know who he is. Of course, nobody have no idea who he is so far. You know, he is an unidentified street artist who painted murals for, um, for the artists and um, Usain Bolt that he likes or she likes. Um, you know, it could definitely be a woman as well, or a young girl, or whatever the case may be. But some people are criticizing the young um, person for drawing and painting these murals for uh, for everyone to see. And uh, they're poking fun at it and saying all kind of stuff. But this is my view on it. As an artist, you draw and you paint how you feel you know everything cannot look the way you want it to look everything is not supposed to look the way you want it to look and here i'm looking at it and it's colorful and it is you know it's abstract art you know there are many different types of artwork here you remember pablo picasso you, you think anybody, anybody can buy a Pablo Picasso painting and take it and put it up in, a, in, in their house? No. You know, there's a millions and millions of dollars for a Pablo Picasso painting. So, yo, you, go on and do your thing. As a matter of fact, come forward and make everybody know who you are. Right? And furthermore, you know, the next thing, you um, don't let anybody... Um, break you down you know don't let them say you know um, make fun of you so much to the point where you say yo yo I'm not gonna do it no more I'm gonna give up because I'm about uplifting and I'm about promoting you know excellence and you can't get better if you don't practice you know, and that's what everybody should be doing. We should be encouraging whoever done this to do better, you know, if this wasn't his best or her best. And if this is his or her best and this is what they they meant to do it this way, it's courage, encouragement, you know, encouragement. Really quick, before we move on to the big story of the day, I want to go ahead and talk about um, a Little Uzi Vert. Now, you remember the rapper? Um, I did do a, a video. You go back and go look at the video where Little Uzi Vert went ahead and put up a um, post of him wearing... <laughs> huh. Wearing is an understatement. The man implanted a $24 million uh, diamond on his head, right? Now, he explains recently, um, after being shouted out, are uh, being called out for cultural appropriation. Now, in this case, you know, little Uzi Bird says, you know what, I'm not cultural uh, appropriate anything. I am a regular guy. I just, you know, just something that he just wanted to do. He's just an average dude and so on and so forth. But do you think that he, in this case, went ahead and uh, cultural appropriated or he just went ahead and did something to, you know, catch our vibes, you know, catch play the game and catch people's eyes and make them um, continue talking about him and the things that he's doing. I don't know. Tell me what you think. You know, because here, you know, it seems like um, individuals and people in the um, Hindu culture, you know, feel like, this, what he had done, was done in bad taste. And one woman here, she uh, posted herself and she says, where are the people saying cultural appropriation? I guess it doesn't matter when it's Asian. Hmm. This is the kind of thing to make you think about it, but it does make you think 
Is it fair? Should there be an outcry for cultural appropriation in this case? I think that's a very deep question. Comment down below and tell me what you think. I can go ahead and do a side video, but at the same time, I, there's something I do need to say. The Asian culture, Hindu, Indian culture, there's billions, billion, billion, billion of the Indian culture, the Hindu culture. Right? One of the top three top religions in the world. And I think that, you know, there's no way that anyone could go ahead and take your culture to the point where no one would not know where it came from. And the difference between what was going on, what was is going on here and uh, when people tend to cry out culture appropriation, when it's a black person, you know, specifically black people in America, black people in Africa, and black people in the Caribbean. And this is the thing here. It seems like when a black person does something, it can be taken over by other cultures and then forget that it originated somewhere else. And if it, they forget that it was a black person who started it. It was black people who, who um, had this culture. It's black people that, perfect example, perfect example. I'm gonna I'm, I'm name a few situations one situations is and you can go in the, you can go in the museums you can go uh, read in a book you can you can google it right black people have been braiding and plaiting their hair for centuries right black people have been wearing dreads for centuries Right? Black people is known for having thickened lips. Black people, black women specifically, are known for having a plump posterior. Right? Daria, bottom, bati, no matter how you want to put it. But, right? No one cared about it, no one liked it, no one wanted to deal with it until when all of a sudden a white person picks it up and now it's the most famous thing in the world. And now, you know, there's instances where you know, a, a woman wear braids in her hair, she wore braids in her hair, had it go to court because her job wanted her to change her hairstyle because she they was they said that her wearing braids is is not part of the dress code only because they seen Bo Derek you can check it up Bo Derek wearing braids in a movie and she lost and had to change her hair you know kim kardashian go ahead and get implants they have a big button and all of a sudden it's all cool but before that was the most nastiest thing you know now her little sister's making make billions of dollars. She make bank doing something to plump lips. But of course, when black people who had it naturally, it was something that no one wanted. No one wanted to admire. No one wanted to talk about. No one wanted to be a part of. 
The white person picks it up. All of a sudden, it's trendy. It's good. That's where you come from misappropriation. It's not misappropriation if you take it, use it, and then nobody knows where it came from. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, yeah, in this case, little Uzi Vert is the first one to ever do it. He, you know, immediately, most people, when they seen what he did, had that image, Hindu, Indian, Asian image in their head automatically. So it's not misappropriation if you already know where it comes from. To me, it's only misappropriation if you take it, use it, and then you don't even give props to the people who you took it from, who you using it for. You know, like for instance, dancehall, reggae. Now you have reggaeton. You know, one of the biggest, you know, hugest damn genres right now. But where did it come from? Tell me where it come from. Dancehall reggae. Now they take it, dancehall don't even get, dancehall don't even get its props from it. Dancehall, all this reggae, all this don't even get its props from it at all. Now that's misappropriation. Misappropriation is like what I was talking about with Kim Kardashian. She go ahead and wear braids and you see people running around with, you know, white people running around with, with braids and, you know, so on and so forth. But it's done in a style that black people have been doing and wearing for such a long time. And when it was done in reverse, black people were doing it first you know, it wasn't nothing. And now it's, it's taking over and then all of a sudden now it's trendy. Now it's, now it's the best thing ever. That's misappropriation. If you want to know, young lady. Now, let me move on and go on, but, you know, but the next thing you know. Now, before I go, I want to go ahead and leave everybody with a video. Um, the back and forth between the two Rasta them, Muta Baruka, you know, everybody know who he is, uh, the um, International Poet Laureate, and Fantan Moja, and the Fire King controversy. Pantan Moza in there and make some really defamatory argument. I don't know where we get these things, but he must tell me how we get that, where we get that from. Me want Fantan Moza in all I travel to tell me which white woman they remember you said me. They will. He must tell me where he get this argument about the media with white woman. And the second thing, the female were mentioned as it relates to Bob. Which cutting it and when him hear me say that? When him hear me call a woman upon the radio? He might forgot to tell me that because he might forgot to answer me lie about, about it. So if you know how answer me, he might forgot to answer a lie about where him get because that is inflammatory not only for me but for the woman who mentioned in the, in the, in the something. You understand? And obviously she have a hear it and then no, him, him not going to cancel with me alone. But he might forgot to talk to him friend them. He might forgot to talk to me, the public. Maybe more have ever apologized so, because I'm have to tell me the evidence where I'm up for the two things that were mentioned. I'm going to have the evidence. I'm going to turn up on the radio and apologize. Mota is a hell of a rate for a man. We know how to disrespect Mota. That's more yeah. than we know. But Mota is a hell of a rate for a Like for dropping on my head. When, when, when me a profound. I don't need to see how yes. he is. Yes. And call himself a raster. Come on, Mota. Remember, be a white girl, you're fucking a Mota. Yeah, there would be a white girl. Yeah. Fanta and Mota wanna real, real first time with Jamaica. And them do more. Yeah. yeah, we don't eat pussy. And we don't fuck body. We clean. And we love people. Say so you do. Long are you? Yeah, for here, Mota now, our talk. 
Why Fanta Moja? Don't us go in a hotel with them girls and do him thing and make sure them do have a smart. Remember, you know? Moja Radio come talk, say Moja locked down with Cindy Breaks for you, you know. And Bob Mala, if you put them kick off, you don't say, freak boy. <laughs> Give him a blood clot, girl. Yes, it's a <laughs> And I know the man say, locked down and, and just, yeah. them nude. And him talk for Radio, say, just nude. Yeah. So yeah. when you, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you nude, you're naked. Yeah. Nude is naked. Yeah. So you try to tell some Moja. Be able to sell, man. No for the rasta we are talking, we are some fucking bulk you know. Fucking, we are not rasta not dread. Yeah, yeah it's a dread. bad man rasta. Yeah. And the boy that we have a plan to rush me, remember me gang Hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the post notification. I want everybody to go ahead and stay tuned and for the next video. And like always, I want you to live good, be good, and goodbye. So no matter come here, do we don't have enough fear, we don't have enough fear, and God bless me, we ain't smoking at the air, never jump up a bar like say them can't come here. Subscriber, thank you very much for coming and visiting me here on Renegade Crew TV.